Searching for the right college is exciting, but sometimes overwhelming, especially when you're figuring out how to pay for it. This video will help you understand the financial aid process and what questions to ask financial aid officers at any school. Here to help is College Insider Douglas Christiansen. He's Vanderbilt University's Associate Provost for Enrollment and Dean of Admissions. Financial aid isn't meant to be overwhelming. It's not meant to be scary. It's not meant to think, oh my gosh, my child will never go to college. It's that you're talking about it whenever that point comes, and then what do I need to do from there forward to make it work? What if I'm uncomfortable talking about my finances? Lots of times families, some families are apprehensive to talk about their finances. They may feel perhaps embarrassed that they didn't save. They may feel not that they're not paid adequately and they don't want others to know that. But financial aid offices, our job is to help families send their students to school. And if so, partnering is the first. So don't think of the financial aid office as this office that's this austere, hold back, kind of green visor. Um, they have a lot of rules they have to follow, no question, federal and state guidelines and institutional guidelines. But as we continue to think about where our economy is right now, this, will, this is increasingly becoming a larger question for families. And families need help, but they need help working through the process as well as help in the aid. But the first thing is you've got to let us know your circumstances so we can help understand how to help you. We're just starting the college search. What are the first steps we should take in the financial aid process? I think if a student is starting to look in ninth grade and they're looking at a type of school, my first advice right now is not to start making cuts or decisions based on cost. What we want to do first and foremost is match that student with their experience, their aspirations, and where, in their, where they want to head and start there. So perhaps calling the financial aid office in ninth grade may be a little premature, but one thing I would do is you start working with your admissions officer from each of the universities around the country. They know the financial aid policies. What are some questions we should ask about a school's financial aid program? Is the institution need aware or need blind? Is the institution, do they meet 100% need in gift or do they supplement some of their meeting their need with need-based loans and work study? Those are all components that um, you could start asking you know, when you're on a college visit with your admissions officer. Really a family should be asking tell me about your aid policy. Tell me about do you meet full need? How do you meet full need? Um, how do you determine if I have need? Um, how do you determine if you say we're not going to package you with no loans? How, is there an income cutoff? What is an estimated family contribution or EFC? How is my EFC used at different schools? The expected family contribution is the amount determined through our financial aid process that we would expect a family to pay for their child's education. So once you've determined that expected family contribution, you may be at one school, the expected family contribution stays the same. But I may go to three different schools and look at, one may be at the income level that my expected family contribution can pay everything. One may be at an expected family contribution where it's the same level, but it is X dollars more. And then another one may be expected family contribution and even higher. But what you can pay stays the same. It's what the universities do to fill the gap between expected family contribution and the total cost of attendance. What is a FAFSA and CSS profile? The FAFSA is a form that you must fill out if you're looking for federal aid at any school across the country. 
Typically, you will work the, in January of your senior year in high school, you'll get that information, and because once the taxes are available, it's all done online. So you would do that. The CSS profile is for institutions that want additional information because they're going to be using more of their aid dollars that then come from the federal program. And so they're going to want to look at, for example, um, the equity in your home, your assets. They're going to be asked a little, they're going to be a little more um, precisioned on because there's going to be more at stake when the institution um, is meeting your full need. Should I fill out both the FAFSA and the CSS profile? 100% I would tell you that if you think you make so much money you don't need to apply, I would still tell you you should apply. Um, because I can give you a perfect example, or many examples, of families who thought they wouldn't qualify, they did not apply, their child is at a particular institution through my career, at multiple institutions, they come back their sophomore year, they apply and they end up receiving aid and they would have received that as a freshman but they didn't apply because they just thought they didn't they wouldn't qualify they didn't take the time to understand and investigate and I my process or thought process would be for the amount of time it takes to fill out the federal form it is um, it's daunting and that asks lots of questions it's kind of like your taxes you've got to pull everything together but for that short amount of time to fill that out and you may receive X dollars, boy, it's well worth it to me. Should we look at the cost of tuition when deciding where to apply? I talk to a lot of parents and the first reaction that they tend to do is they want to put up predefined barriers for their, what their, where their student can and can't look. And they may merely make and say, you can't look at a school that is this price or more. You have to look at it from this, this cost and less. But you really have to think you, that's probably not good advice because what you want to be looking at is it may in fact be cheaper for you to go to the one school based on their aid policy than another school that has a initial um, ticket price, if you will, that is less. Why do universities have financial aid and where does the money usually come from? Usually a question comes to me is, well, I don't understand if your cost is this much, why all of a sudden you have aid? It's because we believe in the diversity in the classroom and we believe in the expansiveness of having people from different backgrounds, thoughts and experiences. And so it's to our benefit as we build an educational community that yes, we have, there is a cost here but that cost will be supplemented with those families that can't afford to do that because it's really educationally based of we want students who have that would bring the next Nobel laureate, the next poet laureate, that we don't want that student to only be a wealthy student, we want that student if that nothing should block them from the opportunity of being here. So a lot of times we would have an aid program where we supplement that. And the purpose in those financial aid policies is to make sure opportunity is for all students. Ways they work that, they, we work with federal dollars, we work with state dollars, we work with our private dollars, we work with our endowment, we work with our operating budget, we look at um, work study, for example. All of those are components. We look at what the family can contribute, and all of that together, we try to put together a package so the student has an opportunity to be here and that they're not held out from being at a school like Vanderbilt because perhaps their parents couldn't afford that full cost. What are some unique new financial aid programs various schools have launched? Nationally, we've seen over the last three to four or five years, 
lots of institutions re-looking at how they look at financial aid and how they distribute their aid, particularly trying to hit the question for that low income, but really that middle, upper middle income student as well. And so we have programs nationally that are, that based on a level of income, you, are you pay a certain percent of the tuition. We, there are programs nationally that if you make a certain amount of money, you will not be given packaged or offered need-based loans. We'll give that to you in grant. There are other programs that are looking um, specifically at what's called the expected family contribution and trying to minimize the expected family contribution, giving some relief on that side of the equation. So these are all, it's complex, but an example here at Vanderbilt is we initiated a new expanded aid program this past year. And what our program is, is we are 100% need blind and we meet full demonstrated need. Um, and if you have demonstrated need, whether you are low income, middle income, or upper income, if you have demonstrated need based on the factors of how we determine that, we would have normally packaged a component of your aid with need-based loans. We will not do that anymore. We'll substitute that with gift. The reason for that is we do not want students making decisions on what they want to study for fear if they can pay it back later. So uh, everything I've just used as examples and specifically about Vanderbilt, these are questions you need to be asking when you go to any college or university. Will it impact my chance for admission if we ask lots of questions about financial aid? I would absolutely say that you should not be nervous, embarrassed, or apprehensive to ask any question to the financial aid office because they simply can't help you. And whether you ask or you don't ask, the answer is still the same. So it, it, will, it will catch up to you at some point. So wouldn't you rather know that earlier as part of a partnership? And there are lots of schools that are just simply in a situation where they're not able to meet the full demonstrated need. That doesn't make them good or bad. That just means that's a specific situation they're in. There are going to be schools that are need aware and need aware is they're going to look at three candidates. And if they have three spots to fill, at one point, they're going to have a spot that says, I need aid. And they may have a student that is slightly less than that who doesn't need aid, and they may have to pick that student. Um, but it's not based on an academic or admissions question. It is truly based on because they are need aware. And they're saying, if we admit you, you need to understand if we admit you, we will have no aid for you. Or, limited aid or types of aid. And so that's why you want to really ask, are they need aware or are they need blind? My family is doing okay financially. Is it worth applying for financial aid? The biggest mistake I see families make nationally when I talk to them is they, they self-select out of applying for need-based aid because they say, well, I make this income, whatever that is, and they think, well, I don't have that need. And so even though the reality is they do, so let me give you some examples. We might have a family that might be considered middle or upper middle income, and one person on the block applies for aid and doesn't get anything at a school. And another family exactly next door applies, and they end up getting something. And there's this question that says, well, they didn't get it, so I shouldn't apply. But the reality of it is it's based on your income, clearly that's a high factor, but it's also your assets. It's also the number of students or children in your family. It's also if you've had extenuating um, health issues or medical bills. It's also if your children go to a private K through 12. We look at all kinds of the factors. I hope today in our conversation that my comments won't be alarming. The purpose here is not to make someone nervous or to be alarmed. But the purpose here is to say, whatever juncture you're at, now you know, and what do we need to do to help move forward? Mm -hmm.